So today's film we've come to the tiny little village of Snarford. It's about halfway between Lincoln and Market Raisin. It's so small we haven't been able to find a decent village sign yet. We've had to make do with posing at the crossroads. This is what passes for Main Street in this tiny village. We're going to find out about the fascinating people who used to live here. A family who built a business empire, built a large mansion house here, and they actually had a huge deer park which was covering this area behind me. They left behind them some of the most amazing church monuments in Lincolnshire, if not in England. And actually I can remember as a child cycling out here to have a look at them and being awed by how spectacular they were. So we're going to find out about who were these people who did these things, where did the money come from and what happened to them, which means there's no trace left in the landscape around. Well, the family who made Snarford such an interesting and important place were the St Pauls or St Poles. And the first really interesting generation was George St Paul, who was a lawyer in the time of Henry VIII. And he built a career as a counsellor, an advisor and a man of business to Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk. And Charles Brandon and his wife Catherine Willoughby were establishing a significant land empire in Lincolnshire at that time. And they wanted good sound Protestant men to work with them. George married the daughter of another local family, the Askew or Ascoff as it's spelt family. He married Jane Ascoff and her sister was the very significant Protestant martyr Anne Askew, burnt at the stake in 1546 for her advanced Protestant opinions. So George St Paul had some very interesting relatives. In fact another interesting person in their story comes into it after George died because his wealthy widow then remarried to Richard Disney, another one of the Lincolnshire Protestant gentry. And of course you'll pick that name up immediately, Disney. Was he a relative of Walt, do you think? Yes, apparently so. In fact, Walt Disney has even been to visit his grave. So we have a lot of interesting people already in our story. But the real interest is in the next two generations. When we go into the church, we can meet them in person. Well, welcome to St Lawrence's Church, Snarford, one of Lincolnshire's loneliest churches. Struggled to survive over the years because hardly anybody lived here. Now it's in the care of the Church's Conservation Trust, which makes a fabulous job of preserving these wonderful little churches for us. And it's actually one of my favourite places to bring American tourists. They're always astonished by what they find here and how things are arranged. For example, where you would normally expect the high altar to be up against the east window, there's a huge tomb. In fact, it's a tomb that looks rather like two people in a double bed. And so you can perhaps understand that one of the Victorian vicars thought that this was rather sacrilegious and wanted to get rid of this tomb. Luckily for us, he was shouted down by a local outcry and the tomb has survived. So we can have a closer look at it. And what a marvellous tomb this is. Huge alabaster tomb with two sleeping figures who've been here since the 1500s. And we can see a knight of the shire in his dress armour with a sword clasping his prayer book. And his head is resting on an elephant and castle, the family symbol. Next to him is his wife, looking all of about 14, uh, also in dress of the period, with a prayer book uh, gazing up towards heaven. Who were these people and how did they come to afford such a magnificent tomb? Well, who we have here is Sir Thomas St Paul, who died in 1582, and his wife Faith Grantham. And Sir Thomas was the son of George St Paul or St Paul and Jane Askew or Askew that I was talking about outside in the churchyard. 
and they were uh, a successful rising family. Uh, Sir Thomas became a lawyer like his father, an estate manager for Catherine Willoughby, Duchess of Suffolk, and he became closely connected with many other of the Lincolnshire gentry, particularly who were of evangelical views. Faith Grantham, for example, was from an evangelical family who remained on the uh, forefront of Protestantism up until the English Civil War. So here we see a man on the rise, a man who made money out of law, bought land, built a new house and established what he hoped to be a dynasty of powerful Lincolnshire landowners. This magnificent tomb for the St Paul's has been here since the late 1500s. It's well over 400 years old and it's still just beautiful in all the colours. Another beautiful part of it though is the children. The family's children are all surrounding the canopy at the top above the tomb. And we've got a mixture here of girls and boys with right at the top the son and heir uh, praying for his family, you might think. So it's a wonderful tomb. Quite interesting that two of the girls in this apparently evangelical Protestant family actually married into Lincolnshire Catholic families. But what happened to the son and heir? Did he succeed in establishing the dynasty of St Paul's that clearly was intended through this magnificent tomb? Well, if we come to the other side of this extraordinary church, we can find the next generation, because here we find Sir George St Paul and his wife Lady Frances. And this is really just one of my favourite tombs anywhere. Here they lie are looking like a very wealthy, fashionable couple, propped up on one elbow on a nice cushion, looking for all the world like they've just returned from a party. But there are hints of tragedy and sadness here. For there's no great ring of children, just this one child in black at the bottom of the tomb. Their daughter Mattatiah, who died at the age of two. So there was to be no extensive dynasty of St Paul's. Here is where it ended. Yet these two are fascinating people and there is so much more to find out about them. So this magnificent tomb fills right up to the ceiling into this church. It's got the coats of arms of all the associated families, the family uh, slogan, and then we come down to a plaque which tells us a little bit about Sir George St Paul, who's been lying here since he died in 1613. So who is this couple, or who were they, perhaps? Well, Sir George lived from 1562 to 1613. 13. Like his wife's father, he was involved in law and local administration. In fact, his wife was very close to him. Sir George's best friend seems to have been Sir William Ray, her brother. They were both children of the judge Sir Christopher Ray, who lived at Glentworth, not far from here. And they were all closely involved with radical Puritanism in Lincolnshire in the late 1500s and early 1600s, particularly Sir William, the brother of Francis, who was a friend of John Smith, the separatist, and Richard Bernard, the great Puritan preacher. So George and Francis, Puritan, wealthy, influential people in this region, copied the example of the Duchess of Suffolk, Catherine Willoughby, in supporting the education and bringing up bright young men to be the next generation of godly preachers in this district. Their connection with Catherine Willoughby was very close, not only through business, but through family. One of the chief mourners at her funeral was Francis's mother. But their family didn't develop. They had just the one child, and eventually Sir George came to the end of his days. And it's interesting to look at him here as he seems to be gazing into eternity. We know all about how he died because his friends wrote about it in detail and his funeral sermon 
was published. And it really celebrates the end of the life of a godly man whose joy was religion. And in these words we find about how he knew he was dying and how he invited his friends to be with him. Indeed, as I quote, as many of his good friends and diverse reverend ministers in whose godly discourse, devout prayers and good company, he much rejoiced, acknowledging God's goodness that those beloved in his life should be with him at his death. You can imagine him lying in his great bed, surrounded by all these friends. He was a right and true-hearted Jonathan, it was written, and such a friend, may I say, he was, as I fear, I shall never find till my soul rests with his, which was words written by Dr John Chadwick. So that's the end of Sir George St Paul, not the founder of a dynasty as had been hoped, but it was far from the end for his wife, Frances Ray. Sir George St Paul left behind the widow Frances, uh, far from a helpless woman, fiercely intelligent, very rich and strikingly beautiful. She was the daughter of Sir Christopher Ray, who had been Lord Chief Justice under Queen Elizabeth. A clever woman who clearly learnt from her father. Uh, and what we can do, we can follow her as many men came to seek her hand in, in marriage. But this is the man that she chose. This man who came to seek her hand was Lord Rich originally, not yet the Earl of Warwick, who had grown up uh, part of an Essex family of enormous wealth. Lord Rich's problem was his first wife, Penelope Devereux. She left him and pursued an adulterous affair and had several children that had been one of the biggest scandals in English polite society at the time. And he decided not to remarry until after she died. So they married in 1616 and in 1618 he became Earl of Warwick. So this daughter of a Yorkshire lawyer became a countess, the Countess of Warwick. The coronet is interesting because her father had always been laughed at with a malicious rumour that he was conceived in the belfry of the Yorkshire church by a drunken vicar and a barmaid. And yet here she was, she'd risen to become Countess of Warwick. Well, we're now standing on the main Lincoln Grimsby Road on a bridge which actually forms the parish boundary. This, this river is the end of Snarford. And just opposite here is a little Methodist chapel, or, or was a Methodist chapel. Snarford Methodist Chapel. Why would Snarford Methodist Chapel be built here, just outside the parish boundary? Well, the answer is to do with who was in power in Snarford. After the St Paul's, the village went through various owners until the 1800s it was controlled by the doughty Teichborn family and they were Roman Catholic. That was at a time when farm workers in Lincolnshire were increasingly attracted to Methodism. They wanted a Snarford Methodist church but the doughty Teichborns would not let them have one in Snarford. So they got the nearest possible place, literally feet across the parish boundary. They built their Methodist chapel in 1866. And here it survives until 1977 or so. In a way, a little symbol of religious oppression in the 1800s. Well, that brings an end to our little visit to Snarford here in deepest Lincolnshire, West Lindsay part of Lincolnshire, in fact. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Pilgrims and Prophets channel, like our video and tell your friends about it. If you want to know more about the St Paul family, the Ray family and their other Puritan connections in this region, then our book Restless Souls Pilgrim Roots will give you lots of information about these fascinating families. So thank you for watching.